and let's start going. Let's start going. Let's make sure we are inviting people. We need sufficient people. We need to make sure that we are depopulating hell and we are populating heaven. As I said, we are on day 18 of our 31 days of grace and favor. And this morning we are talking about the power of opportunities. And that is the prayers that we are going to be praying along with. Welcome to everybody that has joined in. Godfrey from Israel. Wow. All the way from Israel. Good morning, Lilomo. It's good to see you. It is good to see that even in Israel, we are praying along and we are standing in agreement together. Amen, somebody. Okay, let me give everybody on YouTube and Facebook an opportunity to see my face. As you see on the screen, if you're on Facebook, on YouTube, the title of the message is The Power of Opportunities. And it is my prayer and my um, uh, petition this morning that God will give you divine favor in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So our scripture, just to kick off, we talk about um, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 20. So our anchor scripture for our message today of the power of opportunities in life is Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 to 20, and it reads, Therefore see that you walk carefully, living life with honor and purpose and courage, shunning those who tolerate and enable evil, not as the unwise, but as wise, sensible, intelligent, discerning people. So it is the expectation of heaven that we walk in this way that we walk with wisdom. We walk with the sensitivity of discerning people who can be able to recognize opportunities, who can be able to seize opportunities as well. He's saying, making the very most of your time on earth. This is what the apostle Paul admonishes us. He says, make the most of your time while you are still on the earth, recognizing and taking advantage of each opportunity. So opportunity, Opportunities always present themselves. Opportunities sometimes can also present themselves as failure. Opportunities can uh, present themselves as open doors that lead you to your next level. Opportunities can be in the form of breakthroughs. Hallelujah. So we need to make sure we take advantage of each opportunity. That is why it would be a sad thing to not experience a destiny helper or a destiny door as an, an opportunity because you don't understand it. You don't have the discernment. And the apostle says, while you are still here on earth, stop waiting to check out. Don't want to rush to heaven. But while you are still here on earth, enjoy life while you are still here on earth. Take advantage of opportunities. Recognize them. Take advantage of each opportunity, using it with wisdom and diligence because because the days are filled with evil. Many people know, some people have even got a timeline. They will say, oh, once I turn 30, I've missed out on so many opportunities. I'm already 40. I will never get my marital settlement. I'm already 40. I will never get into business. I will never be employed. It doesn't matter your age, but as long as you are still breathing and you're on this earth, take advantage of the opportunities. Make sure that you recognize them. So our prayers this morning are going to be targeted towards that. Lord, show me the opportunities that I need to take. Somebody type in the comment section for uh, somebody who wants to know what we are talking about. We are talking about the power of opportunities. We are on the scripture of Ephesians. Hallelujah. And he says, do not get drunk with wine and do not be foolish. Do not be thoughtless, but understand and firmly grasp what the will of the Lord is. So our brain cells need to be working all the time. We don't behave like foolish people that behave like we've got all the time in the world. We need to move purposefully as children of God. We need to seize opportunities so that we stop complaining, so that we stop blaming the government, so that we stop blaming our friends. We need to firmly grasp what is the will of God. What is the will of God? That you live an abundant life. That abandoned life will need you to be up and about and smart. That abandoned life needs you to be in charge. That abandoned life needs you to, to understand that, that 
you, you need to upskill yourself, that you need to work on your talents. Talk to me, somebody. So do not get drunk with wine, for that is wickedness, corruption, stupidity. Don't be involved in corrupt things. Don't be involved in stupid things that will slow down your growth and your advancement in life. But be filled with the Holy Spirit and constantly guided by him because the Holy Spirit will always nudge you and tell you when a thing is an opportunity. That means children of God don't get involved in scams. Hallelujah, somebody. You need to recognize and the Holy Spirit working with you and guiding you you begin to realize that this person that I'm dating, this person is just a scammer. Or you begin to realize that this person I'm about to get into a business partnership with, this person might very well be a scammer. Therefore, I need to be very cautious of how I, I deal with it. Hallelujah. I, or I deal with this person. Don't just sign documents. He says, be discerning. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. What is his will? What is the perfect will of God? Don't walk in any other type of will. He says, speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, offering praise and singing and making melody to the heart, to, of, in, in your heart to the Lord. Always give thanks to the Father for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you are grasping this. The, the moral of this scripture and the moral of our discussion and our prayers today is that we should recognize opportunities. We should take advantage of opportunities. We should not just be waiting for handouts. Talk to me, somebody. We should be sharp enough to identify, to create opportunities around us. What is opportunities? Opportunity is an opportunity. It's a chance for you to advance yourself. It is a chance for you to progress in life. It is a chance for you to make profit. People can be in business and make losses, but people who understand opportunities, who are led by the spirit, are people who are profitable in their ventures. Why are you not profitable? Are you utilizing the abundance of the Holy Spirit in your favor? Opportunity is a favorable circumstance or an, an occasion. That is why it aligns so perfectly with our 31 days of grace and favor that we should be seeking opportunities because when you are a favored child of God, when you are a great child of God, automatically you move and you advance and you profit. Opportunities come your way. You are able to identify opportunities. You are able to look Locate opportunities and opportunities are able to locate you. The secret of success in life is for a man to be ready for opportunities whenever it comes. There are people who keep on saying and believing God for a car, yet they don't even have a driver's license. There are people who are saying, I believe in God for a house. You don't even have one iota of saving. Do you know that there's rates and taxes and maintenance of that house? Talk to me. Recognize opportunity. Come on, somebody. The power of opportunities. Make sure you are letting those who are just joining us in to know we are talking about the power of opportunity you want to be a doctor are you going to do it by osmosis by sleeping on the bed next to a doctor no you are going to have to study you want to be an engineer you are going to have to study you're not going to make it going out and partying every single weekend we need to be responsible as children of god understanding that there is power in opportunities but those opportunities come to people who are prepared if you are not ready you are not not going to receive the opportunities. Talk to me, somebody. Every single failure in life is also an opportunity for you to try to become more intelligent in your approach of that same thing. That thing that you failed in the first time round, it is your opportunity for you to correct it. Talk to me, somebody. It is your opportunity. That is why I'm saying it also, it also echoes in the area of relationships. If you messed up in one relationship, Talk to yourself and say, self, stop being silly. Stop being stupid. The next time you're in a relationship, you need to understand what the red flags are and you are going to deal with those red flags. You are not even going to enter into a relationship where you have to even deal with it. You run. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. Resist him and run. Resist her and run. If you can see that this person is going to slow me down in life, this person is just after my money. This person is after, after just breaking my heart. This person is, run. Don't be desperate 
in such a way that you 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 you, you, you are not discerning and God has told you what to look out for. Talk to me, somebody. Let me leave the area of relationships because we're going to talk about that later tonight. So what I'm saying is that you need to unlock this secret of success. You need to unlock the power of opportunity, the power of opportunity. Opportunities are looking at you. Every single person, opportunities for jobs. Yes, even in the midst of a, a situation where people are, are, um, are giving jobs to their family members and you know that you, you need or you qualify for that job, there is a door that can open right there in the midst of that whole scandal, catastrophe or whatever it is. God can make that opportunity door open for you. You need to locate your opportunity. Hallelujah. Let me see what Mendeza says. Hallelujah. When God locates you, that's true, Mendeza. No one else can close that door. When God has decided to open up that door for opportunity for you, nobody can close it. But you see, the danger is, is when we close it upon ourselves, our us ourselves can close these opportunities because God sends them to us. But sometimes we are too slow to act up. We are too slow to, to, to take advantage of the grace. There is a door. There is a, we need to understand that there is a timing that that door is open for. And if you don't jump on it, the person is gone. If you don't jump on the opportunity, you see a customer, you have an opportunity to make a pitch to that customer and you are still dilly dallying. People who don't know, you didn't practice. You didn't, you, you were waiting for an opportunity, but the opportunity presented itself and you were not ready. You don't know your proposal off by heart. You don't know what your service offering is you don't know what your value offering is I, I, am i communicating i know today this is how we need to be we need to be sharp as christians we are not only backing it with prayer only we are saying god we know that you want these good things for us we are saying we are backing it up with prayer we are saying we are backing it up with declarations but we are also going to work on ourselves because we need to be ready when you are going to meet your prospective investor you are not going to go you are not going to be speaking in tongues am i communicating somebody somebody type amen if i'm communicating with you Somebody type amen if I'm communicating with you. When you speak to a prospective investor, they want to know, do you understand what is the opportunity cost? What is your marketing strategy? What is your business plan? Where are we going? What have you done? How much do you have? What are you bringing to the table? What can you promise me? What is your forecast? What is What are you going to deliver for me in the next three, four years? We need to be sharp as Christians. Power of opportunities is there for us. The divine opportunities are there laid out for us. But let us work on ourselves. Thank you, Samantha, for the gift. Guys, make sure you are following all the gifters as well. We need to be ready, Bushe. We need to be ready. You, 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 you want a teaching job. You want to become a teacher. In that elevator, in that, on that escalator, you are at a shopping mall and you are going to, you are just going around your shopping. You are rude to somebody. And that happens to be the school principal of the school you wanted to go to teach at. Watch yourself. Carry yourself well. Don't walk around foolishly. Those who missed the beginning of the scripture, let me just go back and make sure I gave you the right reference. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 to 20, he says, do not walk around as, a, as if you are unwise. Be sensible, be intelligent, be a discerning person. Be sharp, sharp. I wish I could even tell you in my Pretoria language. Eh? Yeah? So open your eyes, be, be sharp, understand. Okay, this is the, you know, you, you don't know who you are talking to. I've spoken to billionaires walking in flip-flops in malls. But the way you are ready and the way you carry yourself, it is not seasonal when you are. That's why I said you never know who's the angel that has been sent to bring down up your goods. You don't know, don't walk around foolishly. Oh, yes, Anna, God help us not to be foolish. Because you are talking to somebody that is the, the person who's going to unlock the door of opportunity for you, but you didn't know your story. All you can tell them that is that, oh, I'm going to, yes, you're going to pray about it and you believe in God. And maybe that even ends you more points. But the fact that you know your story and the person gets confidence. And that, okay, if this person is actually even humble, this person, not only are they humble, but they know their story and they believe in God. That means this is somebody who's loyal. I can employ most times when I've tried to, 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 to employ a person, um, uh, you know, 
I would not so much be focusing on the qualifications. You know, when I can see that you have potential, I'm also looking at loyalty. Can I trust you? Can I trust you with my business and walk away and still find my business intact or even find it better? I'm asking other questions. I observe the way you carry yourself. Do you only respect me or will you respect customers when I'm not around? Will you respect your colleagues when I'm not around? Will you respect even the... Do, where is your level of loyalty and respect? Somebody say the power of opportunity. The power of opportunity it says don't get drunk in wine. You just think that you are going to go up by connections of corruption. That is what the scripture admonishes says. No, 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 no. Be thoughtful. Use your mind. Be not, don't be thoughtless. Understand, firmly grasp what is required here. But, and, and also you have this challenge that you have people who are too afraid to make mistakes. They don't want to take the step. And God says there's a power of opportunity. Yes, Buche. Yes, Mendeza, the power of opportunity. Don't be afraid of, of taking the step. Don't be too fearful. Hallelujah. Those are the kind of people who never amount to anything. They don't understand. They're observing the clouds. The Bible says that he who observes the clouds shall never sow. You are always checking out. Oh, it's raining. Maybe I will start next week. Maybe I will start tomorrow. Some of you, you need to take opportunity of having good health. And how are we going to do it? We need to correct our nutrition. There is a decision I made a few years ago, and I realized that I had slept in it because I'm not perfect. But God had brought a realization just recently that you need to look after your physical health because you have a lot to live for. What is your why? Why are you living? Where are you going? Do you understand that you have children that you need to keep alive for? Do you understand that when you, are, when, when you understand that you have a why, your why must be strong enough. Why am I working? Why am I going into business? Why, why do I need to keep alive? The mo uh, this might sound like a joke. But when you understand why you need to keep a life for the children, maybe some of you, you've got small children and those small children need a parent to stay alive. You understand that you can't eat anyhow anymore. Do you understand what I'm saying? You understand that you cannot consume certain substances. You understand that you cannot be addicted to certain things. You cannot be addicted to sugar and cake and say, I'm just enjoying life. I'm going to eat anyhow and I'm just going to make it. I'm just going to wing it. Talk to me, somebody, the power of opportunities. Understand that you've got a responsibility. Don't live life deaf when you are hearing. And you, I'm, look, the Bible clearly says you have power to trample upon serpents, right? You can drink any poison and it shall not harm you. God does not mean eat all the sugar that you want or, or the carbohydrates that you want, that you become diabetic. I've always, in my church, there are things that I have always said to people, this one is a prayer point. This one is a nutrition point. We need to reverse the certain things as Christians. We can't just be chopping anyhow. You just eat, eat, eat. You know, sometimes I've gone to functions and it's very easy, especially as ministers of God. You get set apart. You get given special tables, special treatment all this food and you want to consume it even if you are not a minister some people you invite them to a party they just want to gobble up everything look after your health some things can be re reversed hallelujah no matter what you're going to succeed my my moderators hallelujah you are going to succeed but let us look after ourselves some young people even those who are skinny in terms of body shape People are collapsing of heart attacks. And they say, I don't know how, but they were not skinny. They were not overweight. It's not in the overweight. Look after your health. There is a way to eat. There is a way. Listen, I know somebody might be saying, oh, Pastor Fortune, but it's tough. It's expensive to eat healthy. Eat those vegetables as, as ugly as they, as they may taste. Let me get out of there. We'll have another discussion on this food issue. So today we're talking about the power of opportunity. It's that favorable condition that has been made available to you this morning. God says, I have opportunities and I've made them available to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Good evening, Tatenda. Good morning from my side.
Opportunity is when a chance is given to someone which is mostly a chance of growth and advancement. Understand the reason you are awake this morning is to grow and to advance. We don't only grow spiritually, we grow mentally, intellectually, spiritually. We grow even in our physical knowledge, biological knowledge. We increase. That is why we've got different gifts here. Some of you are nutritionists. You need to talk to me and inbox me. Let's have a chat session so that you can teach others about what you do. Tell us where we are going wrong so that we can live longer. The power of opportunity has come into our life. We need to take care of it. We need to seize it. We need to recognize it so that we can live longer. What's the point in making billions if you're going to check out the next day? So this is when privilege is given to someone and a venue to grow, to advance, to showcase the exploits. Those that know their gods, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Exploits are available for people who recognize opportunity. Tell your neighbor, open your eyes. Open your eyes. Yes, just like Paul and Silas, doors will open for you. Doors of opportunity will open your eyes. They were ready. They were not sleeping. They were praising and they were praying. Imagine if they were sleeping and they were in deep sleep and the earthquake came and the doors opened and they did not realize that it's time for escape now. And they were caught sleeping. They would have been, they would have woken up the next day and they would have just been told like that. Yes, that network must behave, my moderator. Hallelujah. We must recognize opportunity. Opportunity is something that we must always be ready to identify when we see it. Because there are many blessings that will elude us if we cannot recognize opportunity. Am I communicating? Opportunities are many times disguised as small things or small words, but with great rewards behind it. Every single opportunity, every single small step counts. Every single person that you regard as small counts. Talk to me. So our heavenly father is the kind of father that is always providing us with different opportunities. He's always opening doors for us of opportunities. He's always creating avenues for us for opportunities. Talk to me, somebody. So as Christians, we must always be ready and open to see opportunities and recognize them as opportunities as such. That is why I'm saying that when you know what you want, you know what you don't want. Therefore, you understand what is the red flag and you run, you resist the devil and you flee. Don't just date people just because of the sake of dating, because you think it's cool. Don't just get married for the sake of ma marriage is not just a one wedding day affair. After that, you have to sit and look at this face every single day of your life. Sometimes there are, there are a meeting CO2 and, and, and you're not impressed and it's going to be every single day of your life. And sometimes they're going to say things that are not so cool. Are you ready? Have you prepared yourself? Hallelujah. We must always be ready. We must pray. And, 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 and our prayer this morning is the prayer. God, help me to recognize my opportunities. Help me to recognize opportunities in my life. Hallelujah. Make sure you are following the host and, and, and putting on that uh, notification bell. Hallelujah. I don't want to lose contact with you in Jesus name. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for following the host. Hallelujah. We must pray. God help me to recognize my opportunity. Somebody type it in the comment section. You guys need to keep me awake to this morning. Come on, let's talk. Help me to recognize my opportunity. That is your prayer. Help me to recognize my opportunity. Be ready to recognize opportunities. God is sending us opportunities as Christians. We must be able to see them. We must be able to recognize them. Ecclesiastes 9.11 says, I have seen something else under the sun. The race is not to the swift and the battle to the strong, nor does food come to the wise or the wealth to, br to the brilliant or favor to the learned, but time and chance happeneth to them all. Time and chance happens to me and you. You cannot lie and say you did not hear this truth this morning. Time and chance happens to me and you. This verse that I've just read on Ecclesiastes 9.11 is showing us that no matter our present condition or no matter our situation, no matter which side of life that we find ourselves or where we come from, it's neither God or it's neither good or bad. There is always an opportunity that is given to everyone at a particular time in your life. So you have an opportunity to change your life, whether you are from a poor background, whether you are from a rich background. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You have an opportunity from being a shepherd to becoming a king. You have an opportunity to turn things around. You have an opportunity 
How did the millionaires and the billionaires get made? Some of these uh, musicians, uh, there's a musician in South Africa that started an energy drink, for example. Started selling. Didn't say I'm going to end up being a musician. Expanded themselves. Time and chance happens to them all. Somebody keep on saying, I will recognize my opportunity. God, help me recognize my opportunity. Help me recognize my opportunity. Anytime there is, you, you, you get an opportunity of prayer and fasting. Every Friday we are praying and fasting, by the way. We, we, we have an opportunity for, for us to, 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 to recognize opportunities, to have time of meditation where we are we, we, we secluding ourselves in God. Your faith qualifies you to have opportunity as well. Hallelujah. The Lord says he will touch your eyes and he will open your eyes. God, help me recognize my opportunity. I will recognize my opportunity. Thank you so much, Butler. Thank you for those who are, 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 are typing it in the comment section. I will recognize my opportunity. How do you recognize that opportunity? Through diligence. You need to be diligent. Hallelujah. You know you are waiting for an opportunity. You must be diligent. You must be ready. Ready to pitch, ready to say what exactly you want to do. Engage the power of diligence in everything that you do. If you're going to start a business, start a business that is going to excel. Start a business that is going to attract us and we come back to you and to patronize you. Don't make us patronize you because you say you are a Christian, you are of the same faith. No, I'm not coming to buy your, your fat cakes or, or your cakes just because you're a Christian. If they don't taste nice, I'm not coming back. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, I won't be touching fat cakes anymore. My health is too important now. Hallelujah. If you are going to give me a service on my vehicle, I'm not bringing back my vehicle if you are not exercising diligence and excellence in your business. Talk to me. Thank you so much, Tatenda. God bless you and increase you where you have taken. May God increase your finances in Jesus' name. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourselves wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. That is 1 Timothy 4 verse 15. Be diligent in everything that you are doing so that everybody can see your progress and some everyone can come to your business. We come back for repeat business because you are doing a great job, not just because you are a Christian. Am I commun communicating to somebody? Yes, the unqualified has been qualified by God. He puts you in that position. It does not mean that, you know, tie your hair and bow pai pondo and just be, be useless and you don't improve yourself. Oh, shakarabaya. Improve yourself. Justify why you are there. Because if you know you did not have the qualifications and there are people who are reporting to you, they are going to be looking up and say, how did this one land here? As you are put in that position and you know you did not have the qualifications. Upskill yourself so that people can know that you have something to offer. God will hide whatever you don't have and whatever you cannot do. But upskill yourself. Somebody say, Akaraba, Shonta, Diaba. I will recognize opportunity in Jesus mighty name. Then the fourth thing you need to do is to have commitment. Be committed in all the things that you are doing. Be committed in every single area of your life. We must always sow seeds of commitment. Let people know that you are committed and you are consistent. Be diligent, yes Miss M, in your work and your business. Don't be suddenly caught a you, you say, oh, I don't know why they're retrenching me. I don't know how my name got to the retrenchment. And then you suddenly come on the prayer line and say, oh, God, help me not to lose my job. And you know that you have been skipping your work. You have not been going to work diligently. You have not been committed to go to work. Come on, Christians. I don't know why the Lord is making me rebuke. I don't know who I'm rebuking. But we need to be committed. Because some of these things are not from the devil. We sabotage ourselves because we don't recognize opportunities. You need to show up. You need to show up for your work. You need to show up for your business. You need to deliver consistently and committedly. Commit to do. The way you started is the way you maintain and the way you go up again and again and again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will reap the fruits of great opportunities if you are committed. Somebody tell your neighbor, be committed. Be committed. 
We must be committed in our work. We must be committed in our service to God. You don't just serve God this week and next week. Oh no, I landed my job now. I'm not going to be going consistently to work or, or, or to serve in church. There are people that are owning multi-million rent companies, but there are ushers in church and they still show up. And when they don't show up, they have a way of making up for it. But when I, no, 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 no. Once you drive your Porsche, you, you feel you are too good to serve God. Be committed in your relationship with God. A lot of people are very committed when they're looking for something. Oh God, I want to be married. I want to be settled maritally. I want my financial breakthrough. And once they get the financial breakthrough, they will not be showing up on these 5 a.m. prayers. We are not deceived. Do you know the, the sad part as ministers of the gospel when you say, ah, people are, pe people are just people. People can just drop you any minute. Once they get what they need, they might be gone. Commitment. Tell your neighbor, be committed. Be committed in your fellowship with God. Be committed in, in your business. Be committed in your profession. Be committed in your ministry. Don't just be a minister who does not study the word of God. Go and study the word of God. Go and pray with your God. Grow so that you don't become a gossip monger. And you are talking about other ministers of the gospel. Instead of doing your own, do your own, run your own race and grow your own ministry. Jesus Run your own race. We are not all given the same. I'm not out here trying to be somebody else. I'm just me. Those who are called, those who are called to walk with me, those who are called to flow with me will flow with me. I'm not going to change myself to become somebody else. Somebody might say, oh, this woman talks too much. This woman is too loud. Blah, 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 blah. But you guys love me anyway. <laughs> Lena says, rebuke me, rebuke me. Be committed, be committed, be committed. Hallelujah. So opportunities, the slothful man, the book of Proverbs chapter 26 verse 13 says, the slothful man said there is a lion in the way, a lion in the streets. Many people are too afraid to take what belongs to them because of fear. You are fearing a lion. Did you put that lion there? Do you work in a zoo? Do you stay in the zoo? I love you too, Tatenda. <laughs> I love you. I love you, Nomsa. I love you. I know you love me even when I rebuke you because the Lord loves those he rebukes. You guys from today, you will go out with, with this. They so call it stony ginger beer. You will go just drink some ginger beer that will make you strong. And you make sure you add whatever it is. If it is a proposal you are going to draft, make sure you put your best brain cells on. Kasha katakaya. Proverbs 26 verse 13, my darling. PK. The slothful man, is that the one you want? They says there's a lion in the street. Many people are too afraid to take what belongs to them out of fear. Because of fear, many people have not done anything this year. They've not even started. They are fearing. They are fearing what if it's a wrong investment? What if that is why? Let me tell you a secret. When I began to do trading, you know, I liked to trying different things and I like investing in different things. I learned from myself. I went to school for myself. And one of the things that my teacher taught me, he says, don't trade for other people. I said, but why they're asking me, he says, you don't want to be blamed when the money goes boom. And that's true. It's not for the faint hearted. There are things that is why I'm saying, know your lane. There are things that as an investor, you know, okay, this I cannot invest in. That is why I said, have the discernment to recognize the right opportunities. Some of you have got no business doing this get rich quick schemes. A get rich quick scheme is a get rich quick scheme, guys. And what do they call it? What do they, pyramid, what, what? Yeah. Don't do those pyramid things unless you have the liver for it. If you don't have the liver for it, don't, don't, don't do it. Because how many times have you warned, have you been warned, don't do this, don't do this. There are things that are good opportunities. There are things that you can just see this is a mess. I'm not even, I'm not even offering an opinion on if you feel whatever pyramid scheme you might be, I don't know. I'm not commenting on that. But I'm just saying every investment opportunity because always I encourage people to diversify their income streams and make sure that you, you get your hands in many things. If you want to be involved in stocks investment, go and study show yourself approved before you start meddling in stocks. Even if somebody tells you, uh, uh, 
uh, uh, uh, that these shares are good for this company. Have you investigated for yourself or are you just going to go by word of mouth? So tomorrow, don't have an heart attack when that company goes down. Are, are we tracking together, guys? Shakarabaya. Don't be, be in shock because now you have a heart attack and say, my money is lost. The Mashonisas took my money. The, 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 this person... Study to show yourself approved. Is this a good opportunity? Tatenda is laughing away. If you don't have the liver for something, if you know you want a certain type of lifestyle and you know that this lifestyle will only come from a, a partner that is a, a, a Tzotzi or, or a, a gangster or whatever, don't be shocked when the person beats you up. Don't be shocked when the person suddenly points you with a gun. Because you wanted the get rich quick scheme in in the uh, in the relationship, most. Oh, don't leave! Don't leave this broadcast now. Just stay here. So let's talk some truths. Let's recognize opportunities. Let's be discerning. Ephesians chapter five says we must be discerning. Ephesians five verse fifteen to twenty says opportunities will come. Let us have the discernment to recognize it when it comes. But let us have the discernment to recognize when it's nonsense. Morning in the name of Jesus, Kata. You want, this is why I'm saying that, guys, I, I, am, I am very, I'm a compassionate person by the grace of God. And I will help pray you out of an abusive relationship. That is true. And I will believe God and stand with you. And we will rebuke the enemy together. But I wear many hats in this life. I'm also a legal practitioner. So when I'm a legal practitioner, it depends on what hat you come to me with. When I talk to you as a client, I am not going to be mishmushing you. I will tell you exactly where you went wrong if you want to know. When I do my coaching sessions for the women, I tell you where you went wrong. And have the liver to take it, to shake yourself and say, yeah, and go and correct you can't just be going around and doing the same thing and the same thing. Some people that we are in relationships and associations with, you can see that this one is a devil. Even Jesus knew who Judas was, Mus. Jesus knew. I must not be too late for prayers. I know you guys want to pray. Thank you, Florence. Thank you for everybody who's not leaving my broadcast, who's, who's following the host. Thank you. Follow the host. There's a lot you will learn from me. Don't worry. Hallelujah. We are going to have a session with women. I think I scheduled it for 8 p.m. today. Um, there's a link if you want to join. If you are a man as well, I think you can come. Today we'll be open, maybe, hopefully. <laughs> Let's tell the truth so that we can come out of the mess that we have put ourselves in. Ah, Fancy, you're not leaving. We are not leaving. Let's tell the truth because some of these, we enter opportunity. You say, ah, but I thought it was an opportunity, Pastor. Did you do your research? Why, why, why did you lose? I've lost because I wanted to get rich at some point. And you, yes, you need liver. You know what the liver, liver is the, is a very important organ of the whole body. You need to be strong. Investment is not for everybody. There are certain types of investments. When you even go to the bank and say, I've got money, I've got my uh, 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 proceeds from an inheritance or a pension. Ask them, is there one that guarantees my capital? Because I don't have the liver for anything else. Don't ask them, okay, you say you're going to invest in which markets? What? Don't say I'm not educated. Don't say I don't understand. There are many things I don't understand and I will walk circumspectly. I will, I will go slower. Thank you, Anna. I will go slower before I, do, I don't understand the thing. When these people, these telesales people, when they call you and they keep on saying, eh, ma'am, I want to take you up this opportunity. And I say, I don't work very fast. They, they hang up the phone. I'm not working. I don't want to know. I don't need another cell phone. I already have the cell phone. There's nothing wrong with my current cell phone. I don't want another cell phone. What are you doing with another cell phone? I don't care how much the package is. I don't care how cheap it is. When I'm ready to do that, if the package I'm on, if the prepaid that I'm on is not working for me, I will make another plan. Some people will just be taking contracts, contracts left, right, and center. Hey, Abba. Opportunities are opening for you this morning. My moderator says to me, I must go back on topic. So, saints, 
don't stay stagnant because of fear, but do your research. If you don't move, nothing moves. Many people have paralyzed their lives because of the fear of failure. They can't take the step. You can't take the step because you are not even researching. You can't take the step because you are paralyzed of fear. Fear has paralyzed you. And remember last week we prayed, we say, Lord, we rebuke the spirit of fear in our lives in the name of Jesus. If you don't take any moves, you will not move. Some of you have been saying, God must settle me maritally. You've been dating the same girl for so many years. What is holding you up? Why are you not proposing marriage to them? Is it, what, what fear? What, what do you want to learn? I mean, let's just talk. Why have you been dating somebody for five, 10 years? What are you le learning? Are you in a laboratory? Are you doing the person as a specimen? What do you want to learn? That you will never learn everything. There are things that I discovered about my husband when I was already inside. And when you are inside, it's difficult to go out. You can't go out. Fear is not your portion in need in Jesus' name. Yes, Michelle, you need that guidance, my sweetheart. You will get it here. Those of you who are experts, I need you. Thou shalt come out. If you know you're an expert, come and tell us the truth. Even if you are a financial, I'm not a financial expert. I will ask you questions. You must make sense to us. Help us, point us in the right direction. God put you in that position so that you can make sure that other Christians don't fall into that same trap. So please come and educate us. Those of you who are in the health industry, come forth and come and educate us that we are busy eating ourselves. My daughter said a very silly thing the other day. It was her birthday. We took her to a restaurant and she ordered a milkshake. And on top of this milkshake, there was a, 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 a biscuit and there was something and cotton candy and everything. She says, sure, this is a whole lot of diabetes. And we cracked and we laughed. And we said, at your age, you're already saying that we have just bought you a whole glass of diabetes. Right? Thou shalt come out. I need to see you. I don't give legal advice on TikTok. Let's just be clear. It's a disclaimer. The association does not allow me to do that. But you must read between the lines. When I rebuke and when I tell you, I tell you, open your eyes. Open your eyes. Facebook, are we still together? YouTube, are we still together? We got to pray very soon. So step out. Do what you need to do. God will help you. You've been wanting to start that business. You've been wanting to go into that career field. Step out. God will help you. God will help you do what you need to do. It may take a little while because sometimes God is just like that. God is just chilled until you get your act together. There is something that you need to learn. Talk to me, somebody. There's a proverb that says cowards die many times before their death. It's better to make a mistake than not to make any move at all. But make sure you have the liver for it. Thank you, Tatenda. God bless you. Make sure you have the liver. It's better to take that step and make that mistake and dust yourself and move on. You made a mistake. Some people married the wrong people. You made a mistake. Move on. You will get to know my, when we talk about relationship, you'll know my view. There's God's view. There's my view. You, you go with God's view. I will always tell you. <laughs> Somebody say you love me. Please tell me you still love me. God is waiting for us to show up. Hallelujah. So it takes toughness to triumph in life. If you want to win in life, to attain greatness in life, you have to be tough. The fear of failure has held too many people into in captivity. Too many destinies are in captivity because of the fear of failure. Talk to me, somebody. Isaiah 41, 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yeah, I will help you. I will uphold you with my right hand of my righteousness. Fear not. I am with you. I am with you. I'm going in with you into this thing. I'm going with you into this deal. I'm going to open and sharpen your eyes so that you can read the fine print. I'm going to go inside you with this in this relationship so that you can tell the person that you're up to no good. Take your bags and go. Fear not, for I am with you. Hallelujah. It's better to try and fail than not to have tried at all. It's better to take that step. And you know, the quicker you take, make that mistake, the quicker you can move on. Talk to me, somebody. Fear is the worst enemy of faith. If you are a child of God, you are a child of God that moves in faith. Therefore, fear is one of the things that you need to be careful about. Fear and faith are two parallels that do not meet. They can never meet. I cannot be in fear and be in faith at the same time. Am I communicating to somebody? Thank you, Zanella. Fear not, fear not, fear not.
When you have faith, you can you you, you can dare the enemies that are, are, are charging towards you. You can cross boundaries. You can break down the shackles that are holding you back. When you have faith, you can move forward. You say, fear, I don't have time for you. You tell your enemies, I am not ready to deal with you. I am not ready to be wasting time with you. So shift up. Move out of my way. All the shekels will break down in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare and I decree that you will not fear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Failure is not in your agenda. So when you step in into the opportunities, you don't step in with the mentality that I'm going to fail. Failure is not in my agenda. Can somebody type it in the comment section? Failure is not in my agenda. I will not fail. Failure is not in my agenda. I will not fail. Thank you, blessing. I will not fail. Type it in the comment section. I will not fail. I will not fail. I will not fail. You cannot and will not fail. You cannot fail. You can't fail. It is impossible to you fail. Impossible can't for you to fail. Whatever synonym you can find. Failure is obliterated. Fear, failure and fear cannot work together. What is fear? Fear is the false expectations appearing real. Fear also means forget everything and run. So if you are going to be walking in fear, that means that you are forgetting everything and you are running away from what God has put aside for you, what God has put aside as your destiny. Fear is a force that makes one fear, lose sight of God. You lose sight of what God has put aside for you. God is the greatest of all. So you must know that he has put the best for you. God is the greatest of all. That should be your mentality as you step out in any opportunity, as you're about to recognize the opportunities that is bringing down your, your aisle today. God is the mighty man in battle. He's going to conquer every single battle in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your company might not be doing well now. It does not mean it is an op it's not, it's, that is an opportunity to turn it around. Talk to me. I will not fail. Hallelujah. Yes, you made some wrong business decisions, but there's an opportunity of turning those things around. All powers in heaven and earth belong to our God. Therefore, God is able to turn this situation around. God is still able to make the customer change their mind and keep their contract with me. In Jesus' mighty name. In the book of Numbers chapter 13 verses 33 they forgot who they were and who God is and they were so scared because they were looking like giants they looked around the people that their enemies they said oh, well, they look like giants they are too big we can't conquer them but no 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 you will not forget who you are. You not. You will not forget yourself. You will not forget whose you are. You belong to God. You will not fear. Somebody tell your neighbor I will not fear. I will not forget who I am. I will not run away. I will not fear in Jesus' mighty name. So each time fear comes upon a man, it makes you belittle God and you forget the bigness of God because you start magnifying the problems in your life. You start magnifying the fear. Don't forget and belittle God. When fear comes into your life, it makes you forget all the great things that God has done for you. You need to take out the CV that God has given to you in the past. God has been existing before any challenge that you ever came across. Therefore, your challenge is not a new one. You are not the first person that has been worked out on by a spouse. So your challenge is not a new thing to God. There's nothing new under the sun. God knows how to take care of that issue. Somebody type it again. I will not fear in the name of Jesus Christ. God has been there. He knows this thing. This is his CV. Fear is a lie of the devil. Talk to me, somebody. You need to understand John chapter 8 verse 48, 44 B rather says, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. He, for he is a liar and he is the father of lies. The devil is a father of lies, but not your God. Talk to me, somebody. Is there somebody who says, I will recognize my opportunity. I will seize my opportunity. Make sure you are typing it in the comment section. Fear is the enemy of falsehood to give you what is not your own. Hallelujah. Fear is a dark room and you need to make sure that you are not going to be locked up in any form of dark room in Jesus mighty name. If you think about the photography in the past when they were developing prints from the photo, when, they, when we still had these uh, films that we put in photo in, in, in cameras and, and you put them in a dark room and you develop the negatives from it. Hallelujah. That is what a dark room is. It is where negatives are developed. Fear is a grave digger. Make up your mind. I want you to tell your neighbor and say, I will not be a grave digger. I will not sub succumb to that grave digger called fear. I am not going into any grave 
in any time, any season, any time soon. In Jesus' mighty name, it is not time for you to go down that grave. Talk to me, hallelujah. Fear, I will not fear you. I will not fear in the name of Jesus. Fear is an interest paid. Pay. It's like you are paying an interest on a product in advance that you will never own. Imagine you bought a car and you will never own that car. You will never drive that car, but you are fearing to drive that car. Why did you buy it in the first place? I thought you got the driver's license properly and legally. Therefore, you keep on paying interest on the vehicle. You are paying the installment every month, but you are afraid to drive that vehicle. The devil is a, is a liar and so is his mother-in-law. Tell them something. So, tell, tell God, I will not fear. Tell your neighbor, I will not fear. When you have fear, child of God, you will not be able to do anything. Fear opens up the door for Satan to attack you. Therefore, today we must close down the gates. Devil, you have no entrance. There's no, you did not, even if you paid the entrance fee, I'm not wanting your entrance fee. The doors are closed. The gates are closed. Fear, you will not enter. I do not want you next to me. I will seize my opportunity in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Don't allow fear to rob you of your glorious opportunities that God has loaded you. God has loaded you with a glorious future ahead. He said, I must tell you and remind you that you have been loaded with a glorious future ahead. Therefore, do not fear. Hallelujah. Learn to turn your failures to opportunities of success. Whatever looks like a failure in your, in, in, in your, in your campus right now, turn it around into success. Don't allow fear to steal from you. If you have done it before and you have failed, don't give up on yourself. If you have done that first million, you can do the second million again. It doesn't matter that they took everything away from you. It doesn't matter that they repossessed everything from you. You can do it again. Tell your neighbor, you can do it again. Talk to me, somebody. You will succeed. You will turn that failure into success in the name of Jesus. Learn to turn every single form of your failures into success. The word of the Lord has come out this morning. The word of the Lord has been spoken. That great opportunity of doors of great doors of opportunities are open to his people therefore this morning i echo it and i decree it and i declare it for you doors of opportunity have been opened to you in the mighty name of jesus christ make sure you shout that amen well in the comment section make sure you shout that amen well shout that amen well I want you to echo in the spirit and say, Lord, I'm here. Let doors of opportunities open for me. Somebody shout it in the comment section and say, let doors of opportunities open for me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you, if you, if you feel like God is not answering you, it does not mean no. If you see that you have been waiting for a while, and not you are you are not hearing the yes or a no. You move on to the next opportunity. What do I? What am I saying? I'm saying that you will never give up. Tell your neighbor, never give up, never give up in the name of Jesus Christ. There are dimensions of opportunities in life. Opportunities to do something that is rewardable. Therefore, you will receive your reward in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Anytime you have the opportunity to do something, especially in the house of God, make sure you take opportunity and you do something about that. So. Somebody is looking. God is looking. God is going to open the door for you. Hallelujah. Look at what Joseph did. Joseph had the opportunity to interpret a dream. And God is going to use that talent that is inside of you to also do likewise. When he did that, he interpreted the dream of the king. And the, and what happened? He became the prime minister. Talk to me, somebody. You have to be very sensitive in this season. You are taking over fresh opportunities. Make sure that you make your skills and your talent and your gifts visible in the name of Jesus. Christ. Opportunity to meet remarkable people is coming your way in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare and I decree that you will meet remarkable awesome people that are going to open doors for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Many people have met so many people and ignored them. I told you when we started talking that they, they met the right people and they ignored them and they did not know that they were ignoring the contact to their next contract. Hallelujah. I said something there. You, the person you ignored was the contact you needed for your next contract. Oh, chakaria. You did not know that this was the contact you needed that was going to launch you into your next level of greatness. Let your attitude towards people be right at all times, saints. You will be where you are in the next five years or in the next three years if you don't lose these two things. If you don't do these two things, the right people that you meet 
in life. You need to meet the right people. So you need to make sure that wherever you need to be in the next year, two years, three years, five years, you meet the right people in your life. If you continue missing the right people in your life, you will not be where you need to be in the next five years. Talk to me. Hallelujah. You will need to read the right books. And I told you, research, educate yourself, grow yourself, develop yourself, advance yourself. Do not just be hearing from your friends who told you about the opportunity. Go and research yourself. So if you don't read and if you don't meet the right people, you are doomed. Therefore, I know because you have listened to me this morning, you have showed up for these protocol breaking prayers. You will read and you will meet the right people. You will not ignore the right contacts that are your destiny helpers in the name of Jesus Christ. Whenever you have an opportunity to give, whenever you have an opportunity to sow and to be a blessing to somebody, be like Solomon. Hallelujah. Don't take your giving lightly in the name of Jesus. I told you from wherever you are, wherever you are, don't allow the church of God to go under while you are still alive. If you can see that there is a church that is preaching the word of God and is doing a difference, is making a difference, so into that ministry. If you encounter a ministry that you see is spreading the gospel, that is an opportunity for you to sow. Giving is good and giving will open doors for you. That is just reality. I hope nobody is unfollowing me now. Many of us do not know that each time that we have an opportunity to give, God is actually setting you up to be a blessing. You are still waiting for perfect conditions. You are still waiting for the time when you think that you're going to have 10,000 rands or 1 million rands. Uh -uh. Give in the little that you have. I told you, find people in the street that are hungry. When you are making your lunchbox this morning or tomorrow morning, depending on which country you are from, make sure you are making somebody else a lunchbox as well. Why should you eat alone and other people? suffer in the street. Do you are not understand? He says, you're the poor you will always have amongst you. Therefore, he says, you must also be part of ministering to widows and those who are poor. If you can't do it yourself and if there's a church that can do it, go and sow and be part of that. The amens are minimizing. Is that because you are waiting to do your amen for your own thing? When I'm telling you about giving in church and giving to the body of Christ and giving to widows, you want to lessen the amens. I'm watching you. I'm watching you. Hallelujah, somebody. So let us be like Solomon. Solomon was a double giver. Let us learn to give. Every opportunity that we give must be utilized effectively. I see you, Mara Official. You are catching on on those amens. Karaba Shekeli Amasonda. They are coming on Fortune Online. Facebook, where are you? Talk to me. What have you given to God that would provoke him to visit you? That is my question. What have you given to God that will provoke him to visit you? Opportunity, opportunity. Where are you? Oreke Siondali Amasonda. You have been given an opportunity to hear this message. You have been given an opportunity to read a particular book. You were presented with a book. You didn't want to buy it, but you want to go buy McDonald's. Come on. The devil is a liar. I, is, is that not something that is an error? You, you are given an opportunity to read a book that will advance you and you would rather go buy ice cream. Come on. Ice cream is just going to be there for a few minutes in your mouth. Talk to me. The word is to make you better and not bitter. I told you that today I came with a hard word of rebuke. It is to make you better, not bitter. Don't become bitter. Don't unfollow me. Keep on following me because I came with that word of rebuke. Lelo, I'm, I've got you. Karyalo Sondeliaba. Ah, so each time you hear a good message, go back and listen to it again and again in case you forget. That's why I say go to my YouTube. Follow me on YouTube. Fortune L online. Follow past, uh, Apostle Mara on, on YouTube. Go and re-listen in case you forget what I said and you go back to your old ways. Uh -uh. Listen over and over again. You will discover that you've gotten the truth from it and you will see that your life will never be the same. Somebody say, I will succeed. I will succeed. I will succeed. Study to show yourself approved. Opportunity to live and rule and coordinate people and places. I have it. I have it in Jesus' name. I'm in charge. I'm a leader. I have an opportunity to live and I have opportunity to rule. The fact that he gave you breath this morning. Yes, the word is so sweet. Every single day, don't get tired to hear the word of God. The opportunities that God is giving you are opportunities to be a husband, to be a, a, a good husband to your wife, a, a good wife to your husband. You have an opportunity this morning to be a good head of department wherever you are working. You to be a good CEO, to be a good leader. You have an opportunity 
opportunity to work in your office diligently and excellently. You have an opportunity to be the best student in your school and in your institution. You have an opportunity this morning to be a good believer. In the name of Jesus, you are going to be a good worker. You are going to stop banking work and, and taking too much leave and, and taking too much advantage. You are going to be a good member of your church. You are going to be a good partner in any ministry that you have chosen to associate. You can see they are spreading the good gospel. Partner with them. In the name of Jesus Christ, there is no opposite, there is no position that you can occupy today that someone else cannot occupy. So if you don't seize the opportunity, understand that there is room for overtaking in the in, in this earth. There is room for overtaking. If you don't do it, somebody else will overtake you. It is very sad when you know that God gave you a vision and a dream to do something in particular at a one point in your life and you did not do it. And you say, Oh, but God spoke to me about that. Did you think God was going to wait for you for 15 years? For you to do it. Oh, in Jesus' mighty name. So there is no position you occupy today that someone else cannot occupy. So whenever you have the privilege to do what you need to do, whenever you have the privilege to coordinate uh, uh, whatever it is that you need to coordinate, make sure you do it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. So everything you are is an opportunity. It's an, it's an opportunity. It's not a right. It's an opportunity. It's not a right. King, King, King Nebuchadnezzar saw his ruling over the people as a right and God punished him. But God punished him and made sure that he, he eats grass in the bush. Hallelujah. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Are we still tracking together? Okay, I'm out of time. I'm going to have to wrap up. Hallelujah. But you will have the opportunity to visit notable places. And whenever you, 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 you visit those notable places, God will open doors for you. The doors of opportunity will open for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The doors of opportunity will open for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You have an opportunity this morning to surrender to Jesus. If you came across this broadcast and you don't know the Lord and say as, as your Savior and King, I want you to get born again so that you can claim what we've been claiming. These things happen and these things are revealed to those who are born again. If you are not born again, I want you to say this prayer with me and say, Lord Jesus, I, I, I invite you to come and live inside of my heart. I accept you as my Lord and Savior in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are King in my life. I believe that you died and you rose again on the third day, Lord, that you are my King, oh God, you rose. And as you rose again, I rose with the same resurrection power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm a child of God. I'm born again. I am free of curses. I am, I'm blessed child of God. I'm blessed in my going in and coming out. I am now a God because I belong to God in Jesus mighty name. If you have said that prayer, make sure you shout that amen. Well, shout that amen. Well, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, watch out for opportunities and expect them in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you are recognizing these opportunities. What you do not expect, you cannot experience. Make sure you are expecting something. What you do not expect. Thank you so much, Zimki what you do not expect you cannot experience in the name of Jesus Christ it is what you connect to that will deliver if you do not connect to something you cannot collect to something hallelujah what you connect to will determine what you collect in the name of Jesus in the book of Acts chapter 3 verse 5 the Bible says and he gave heed to them expecting to receive something of them remember that just like the waves of the sea life is a succession of opportunities hallelujah like the wave of the sea life is a a succession of opportunities. Hallelujah. So the opportunities that come your way determine your rate of growth. The opportunities that will come your way, they will, they will determine your rate of growth in Jesus' mighty name. So every greatness in life is a product of opportunity. Toying with your opportunities is like toying with your bright future. You will not play around. You will not waste your bright future in the name of Jesus Christ. The greatest and, op and golden opportunity for you is to give your life to Christ, as I said before. And I'm grateful. Those of you who have given your life to Christ, make sure you inbox me in Jesus' mighty name. You are welcome to inbox the prayer request. You are welcome to inbox the praise reports. You are welcome to put them on the first pin three videos. I will, I always change them, but I always check on it in Jesus mighty name. Father, thank you, Lord. We thank you for this meeting. We thank you for everybody that has shown up this morning. Holy spirit. We thank you, Lord, that even as 2023 has already started and we are in the fifth month, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that on this month, Lord, we are taking over fresh opportunities in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Are we praying together? Make sure you make that amen thunder. Hallelujah. 
Okay, awesome, PK. You can go and watch the replay on and or the ending on YouTube as well. Hallelujah. So make sure you are thundering that amen. Father, thank you. Every spiritual covering that is blocking our opportunities, they are clearing their way by fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ uh, that you are divinely connecting us with people that have what we need in this life and with people th that need what we have in the name of Jesus Christ. Did you hear that prayer? I said you will be connected with what you need by God and you will be connected to people that need what you have solutions that you have they will come you know God will connect you to those people in Jesus mighty name father thank you Lord you are not a partial God Lord thank you Lord that before this month of May comes to an end you will divinely settle every single person who's at the sound of my voice in the mighty name of Jesus Christ father thank you Lord that you are opening the spiritual eyes of everybody on TikTok YouTube and Facebook and everybody who watched the replay in Jesus mighty name name. Father, we thank you. Thank you for opening our spiritual eyes. Let our eyes be open to see in Jesus mighty name, every good opportunity. We will not miss our opportunities in Jesus mighty name. As we prophetically declare and as we close in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every power that has been chasing you not to attain greatness in the name of Jesus Christ, it dies this morning in Jesus mighty name. I declare and I decree that anything that has been chasing you and saying that you will not succeed today, it dies in Jesus mighty name. Every form of spiritual cataract that has been blocking your eyes from seeing your opportunities the right now they will give way for you in Jesus mighty name from today you will see clearly in Jesus mighty name every opportunity that you have missed before this month goes to an end you will receive it back in Jesus mighty name I declare and I decree that no more barriers and no more limitations in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I declare and I decree that every satanic blanket that has been covering your opportunities I command them to catch fire in the name of Jesus Christ I command them to catch fire. Anything that has been covering your opportunities, it will catch fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you, Lord. Let opportunities begin to locate every single person who's at the sound of my voice. Let everybody who is at the sound of my voice be located by their opportunities. Any blanket that is seeking to cover their opportunities, Lord, they are being consumed by fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we are tired of the almost there syndrome. We want to get our goods and our possibilities. We want to get our opportunities. Every almost there syndrome in the name of Jesus that has been working in your life, any syndrome that has been destroying or moving contrary to the greatness that God has set aside for you in the name of Jesus Christ. We command you right now to pack your load in the name of Jesus Christ. Pack your load and get out in the name of Jesus Christ. Pack your load and get out in the name of Jesus Christ. We will no longer be saying with our mouth, I was almost there. I almost got it. I almost made it. But we will say we made it. We got it. We have succeeded. We are moving in the opportunities in the mighty name of Jesus. Every opportunity that has been hanging shall locate you now in the name of Jesus. I said, I declare and I decree that every hanging opportunity is locating you now in the name of Jesus. Everyone that you have, uh, that has what you need and what you need, hallelujah, will locate you now in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree a divine connection between what you have and what you need, what you have and what you need. You are being divinely connected in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will receive testimonies after the service in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will receive testimonies throughout the month of May in the name of Jesus Christ. Your opportunities will not turn into difficulties in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Where you have failed before, it will be turned into success and into an opportunity in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We declare that you are God and without you, there is no other God, oh God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you for these ones that have shown up this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that they will not miss their opportunities in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody type in the comment section, it is my time to testify. It is my time to testify. Thank you so much for having joined YouTube and Facebook. Thank you so much for your patience at the beginning as well. God bless you. Make sure you are following us on YouTube to rewatch if you just came in or to go and re-listen as much as you as possible. On YouTube, we leave the, the, the broadcast there so that you can go and pray along. You can download the message. You can do whatever. Don't worry. It's free. Mahala, you can do it and just do what you need to. Thank you so much for everybody who has gifted. Thank you so much for those who are partnering, those who are subscribing, those who are joining my team.
by clicking there on the heart there next to my name or on Apostle's heart, just join the team. I don't think that one is paid. There is a star one that is paid for every month. Whatever you choose to give, however you choose to partner, whether you partner even on YouTube, there is a button for a subscription. Um, not the subs the subscription is free, but if you want to partner with the ministry every single month, whether you want to give 100 rand or whatever it is, you choose whatever pl um, level that you want to partner with. Just click on that um, thank you assign on um on the youtube videos as well god bless you guys thank you so much i love you so much bye bye youtube bye bye facebook you're blessed okay i don't know i'm trying